Welcome back everyone, today we are going to take a look at 2018 horror war film called Overlord. Spoilers ahead! On the eve of D-Day, an American paratrooper squad, most of them an integrated unit, is sent to destroy a German radio jamming tower in an old church. Their plane is shot down and crashes. Many soldiers die in the crash. PFC Boyce falls in the sea and when he gets out, he hears gunshots everywhere. While he wanders the woods with a gun in his hand, he hears some soldiers chatting in German. When he goes near, his squad member, Corporal Ford, shows up and Sergeant Rezin gets shot dead before them by the German soldiers. When Boyce tries to fight the German soldiers, Ford holds him back and tells him there is no need to fight over dead Sergeant Rezin because they only have two guns and there are many soldiers. Ford reminds him they have to get to the tower down by 6am. There, they meet three more members of their squad hiding behind the bushes in the woods. These members are Tibbet, Chase, and Dawson. Dawson dies in a landmine. Boyce seems very sad about Dawson's death, and Ford advises him to think about himself and the mission he still has to accomplish. In the woods, Tibbet finds a weird dead body. They think it's a dog's corpse, but when they get closer, it resembles a jackal. Chase tells him that this is not an average jackal. Suddenly, they hear some footsteps and point their guns. They see a French girl, Chloe, with a bag and knife. Ford tells them that the girl might put them all in trouble by telling someone about them. They instantly catch the girl and snatch her bag and knife. As Boyce can speak French, this helps the squad to communicate with her. Ford asks Boyce to tell the girl to lead the way. Chloe takes them to their house in the village. She tells them that she lives with her aunt and her eight-year-old brother. Ford asks Boyce to keep an eye on her while they go inside to check if she's telling the truth. When they go inside to her house, Chloe tells them about her sick aunt. Ford thinks that her aunt will become a problem for them, but Chloe tells him that she is very sick and cannot be a threat. In the attic, Tibbet sees from a window that many crots are moving out the street, and Corporal Ford asks each member to keep their explosives and timer on the table as he needs a count. He tells them that they need to place the explosives on the German radio jamming tower. Suddenly, they hear some screams, and they look out the window and find a couple being inspected by the German soldiers. Chloe tells them that this happens all the time. She also tells them they cannot stay at her house because the crots keep checking houses all the night and they do whatever they like. Ford tells her that they would stay here until they take the German radio jamming tower down. Then, Tibbet tells Ford that there is no point in committing suicide over a tower. Boyce says that they all have heard Sergeant Rezin telling them planes cannot provide air support to the beaches until they take the tower out. Tibbet gets very angry and scorns Boyce by saying that once he couldn't kill a mouse and now he is talking like a brave soldier. He tells Boyce he is not made for this job. Ford asks Tibbet to take Chase with him and see if anyone else has made it to the rally point. Then, he orders Boyce to go downstairs and make sure that everything stays clear. Boyce hears Chloe's aunt coughing in her room down the staircase. He goes towards her room and peeps inside. He gets frightened when he sees a disfigured woman inside the room. When he asks Chloe about her aunt, she tells him that she doesn't exactly know what happened to her. She also tells him her aunt hasn't spoken since she got back from the church. Chloe takes Boyce downstairs and bandages his arm. She tells him that she liked the story about the mouse. Boyce tells her that her English is very good. Then, Chloe tells him that she went to university in London to be a veterinarian, but the war broke out and everything has changed. Boyce talks to Chloe's brother, Paul, in French. Upon that, she tells him that his French has a different accent with her grandmother because she taught her. Suddenly, they hear a knocking at the door. The Nazi officer, Waffer, comes in and forces Chloe for sex. Boyce cannot stand this and interrupts the Nazi officer. Ford is forced to follow him. He incapitates and restrains Waffner. Waffner tells them that they will have to face the music by the German army for this. Then they tie Waffner's hands with a rope and take him to the attic. Ford asks Boyce to go get Chase and Tibbet back. On his way, Boyce sees the Nazis burning disfigured village residents with flamethrowers. Suddenly, he is chased by the dog and escapes by jumping into the back of a Nazi truck, carrying dead bodies into the church. Sneaking out of the truck, Boyce discovers an underground base that houses not only a radio operating room, but also a laboratory where the Germans perform various experiments on the French villagers involving a mysterious serum and a large pit filled with black tar. Boyce takes a syringe containing the serum. He sees the French woman's head in the laboratory and gets terrified to see that she can still talk. After some time, he discovers Jacob Rosenfeld, another member of the paratrooper squad, who was captured alive. Boyce frees him and they escape through the base's sewers. In the next scene, Boyce brings Jacob to Chloe's house. Jacob then tells them that the Krotz grabbed him as soon as he hit the ground after the plane crashed. Ford asks Boyce continually about the tower base. Boyce tells him that it is below the ground. He then shows him the syringe containing the serum. Ford asks Waffner to tell him about the purpose of that syringe, but Waffner tells him he doesn't know anything about it as he is just an officer. 
They hoist Waffner up and torture him to reveal the information about the tower. Ford asks him to tell him about the information about the men, weapons, and everything going on inside the tower. After some time, when Chase comes to take Waffner in the attic, Waffner somehow snatches his gun and shoots him in the chest. Chase dies, but Boyce injects him with a syringe he had brought from the underground base in the church. Chase is resurrected, but he soon mutates and turns violent. He starts attacking everyone, but Boyce kills him by bludgeoning him to death. Meanwhile, Waffner seeks away from the soldiers during the chaos and takes Paul hostage, just as a Nazi patrol responding to carnage arrives. A shootout erupts in which most of the patrol is killed, and Ford blows halves of Waffner's face off. Then, Waffner somehow manages to save himself and goes with Paul to the lab. He injects himself with two doses of the serum. The serum stabilizes his condition immediately and he begins to heal his deep wounds. Ford plans to go with the squad's initial mission to plant their explosives on the outside of the tower, but Boyce insists on infiltrating the base both to rescue Paul and destroy the tower from the inside, which will also destroy the laboratory. The other privates support him, and Ford grudgingly agrees. Splitting up, Rosenfeld and Tibbet plan a frontal assault as a distraction while Ford, Boyce, and Chloe enter the base using the sewers. Boyce and Ford plant the explosives while Chloe looks for Paul. She points a gun at a German soldier and asks him to take her to Paul. The soldier takes Chloe to a cell. As she tries to look inside, the soldier tries to attack her, but Boyce shows up at the same moment. Chloe and Boyce look for Paul together and find him in the laboratory. He asks Chloe to take her brother outside to the underground base. On their way, they are attacked by a mutated text subject, but Chloe somehow makes Paul escape through the base sewer. The mutant runs after her, but she eventually finds one of the Nazi flamethrowers. She uses it to burn the mutant to death. She returns to the village, where Tibbet and Rosenfeld have been pursued and pinned down by the base's defenders. Tibbet is wounded while shielding Paul from gunfire. Chloe ambushes and kills the remaining Germans and treats Tibbet's wounds. Waffner, now mutated and possessed superhuman strength and resilience, discovers Ford planting explosives in the radio tower. He easily overpowers Ford and destroys the timer he had set on the explosives. Then he impaled him on a meat hook in the laboratory surrounding the tar pit. He reveals that the serum was made by using the villagers' bodies to distill the ancient power of the Black Tar, which had been running under the village for centuries. He tells them that the aim was to create immortal and invincible soldiers. Waffner tortures Ford badly and takes his revenge. Boyce, who's previously finished planting explosives in the laboratory, ambushes him. Waffner quickly recovers from multiple gunshot wounds, and while he's tossing around Boyce, Ford pulls himself off the meat hook and injects himself with a dose of the serum to heal his wounds. He attacks Waffner, and although he cannot defeat him, he manages to roll an oxygen shank to Waffner's feet, which Boyce then shoots. The explosion sends Waffner falling into the tar pit. As Ford begins to mutate, Boyce tells him to go with him, as he will fix the impact of the serum, but he orders Boyce to leave him behind and let off the explosions in the tower, believing neither side should possess the serum. Boyce follows his orders and runs to the radio center. After this, Ford sets off the explosives in the lab, killing himself, the test subjects, and Waffner, who had mutated further and climbed out of the tar pit. Boyce sets a timer on the explosives in the radio center and narrowly escapes as the church and jamming tower collapse behind him, burning the laboratory. He rejoins Tibbet, Rosenfeld, Chloe, and Paul in the village as the radio announces that the D-Day invasion concluded in a victory for the alleys. In his report, Boyce credits Ford for the decision to plant the bombs inside the church, leaving out the details on why. The commanding officer questions Boyce regarding the rumors of an underground lab under the church. Boyce, sharing Ford's views, denies seeing anything worth digging up. The officer seemingly accepts his story and informs him that they will be reassigned to Charlie Company and the movie ends. Thanks for watching guys.